Good morning. Today I would, I would like to share with you something to ponder about. It's called the 40 Liturgy, 40 Liturgies for Health. And the help to the helpless and hopeless. There was a nobleman from Nicom India who became very ill one day. And realizing that death was soon approaching him, he called for his wife immediately to announce to her his last wishes on earth. He sat her down next to his bed and said, I would like my property to be given as charity to the poor and to the orphans, and also our servants to be set free. But I do not want you to give any of our money to the priest for any of the divine liturgies. At this sad moment, though, the dying man invoked and called for the blessing of the elder Isaiah with great faith. The elder was a holy monk who led a hermit's life near Nicomedia. After this holy man came, prayed over the nobleman. Miraculously, he became well. He got up from his bed and happily ran to find the saint. And this saintly man welcomed him, glorifying God for this great miracle. And he turned around and he said to this nobleman with a humble heart and said, do you remember my child? He asked him, what time you recovered from your illness? At that time, I invoked your blessings, he replied. The saint, having enlightened mind, knew what had been said during his illness and asked him again, have you left, my child, any money to the priest to celebrate liturgies for the salvation of your soul? And this noble man replied to the elder, I have left none. What benefit would I have left for them with this money? It would have been a waste of money to leave it to the priest. And the elder said, don't say that. St. James wrote, is any one of you ill? Invite the priest of the church to pray for you and to anoint you with oil in the Lord's name. And prayer with faith will save the sick, and the Lord will cure him. And if he is sinful, his sins will be forgiven. Here we can see that the priest's prayer, prayers are effective for someone who asks, for them with faith. Now, you should also give an amount of money for the liturgies, and you will receive the proper information from God, he told the nobleman. And so he did. He gave money to a priest to celebrate 40 divine liturgies for him. And he went back home. When the divine liturgies had been completed after 40 days, 
Yes, he was getting up from bed. Suddenly the doors of his home opened, and he saw forty men on horseback, shining with angelic faces, coming in, twenty on the right and twenty on the left. And the forty, and immediately the nobleman shouted with astonishment, How? And why do you come to me, a sinful man, and enter into my home? And the forty, <clears throat> and they replied, the forty of us represent each of the liturgies that were chanted, which have been celebrated for you. Out of philanthropy to God, he has sent us to accompany you to church. Go now with joy and happiness. Run to the church without any hesitation. With the priest's hands, the forty liturgies have been completed. So has Christ himself has united himself to you and, is, and, and inhabits within your heart. After this event, the nobleman gave all his fortune to the pious priest that surrounded the village in order to celebrate the divine liturgies for the forgiveness of his sins and also as a declaration that the divine liturgies and charities can raise a human soul from hell to heaven. In the following incident, incidents narrated by St. Gregory Dialogue, who was Bishop of Rome from the years 590 to 604 AD. He wrote, It is obvious how much a divine liturgy can help the Orthodox Christians who are commemorated within. Once there was a man who had been in prison, far away from his home, tied up with heavy chains. His wife regular, regularly used to have the divine lit liturgy celebrated for his sake. After some years, the prisoner returned to his home country. Then he mentioned to his wife that on certain days the chains were untied invisibly and strangely, and so he was relieved for a short period of time. The wife was so astonished to find out that it happened exactly on those days that the Divine Liturgy was celebrated for his release and rescue. Another time a sailor was traveling to Rome with Audubon, the Bishop of Cornelius. And during the journey, the sailor was in a boat, tied with a rope at the back of the ship. As the, sea, as the sea was very rough, the rope suddenly cut and the boat disappeared. The ship was driven ashore to an island called Ustiva. There the bishop was waiting for three days in case the boat with the sailor appeared. He finally concluded 
that the sailor had drowned. So he ordered the divine liturgy to be celebrated for the rest for his departed soul. When the bishop arrived in Italy, Italy, there in the town of Porto, he met the sailor unexpectedly. His joy was indescribable. How did you escape from the shipwreck? The bishop couldn't understand it. And he asked him again with affectionate love and curiosity. Your Grace, I had been wrestling with the fierce waves for a long time. The boat filled with water was overturned many times. I made efforts to grasp myself on it, but in the end, I was so tired out that I fainted. At that very moment, I was neither awake nor asleep, but there appeared in front of me, in the middle of the open sea, somebody who offered me bread. I ate. I recovered my strength. In a while, a ship passed by, it rescued me safely, and brought me to the shore. And the bishop asked him, do you remember which day that unknown person appeared and offered you this bread for you to eat? The sailor's reply filled him with astonishment. And he said, it was the very day that the Divine Liturgy had been celebrated for his sake and Ustiva. These, my brothers and sisters, are some things to ponder about today. How powerful the divine liturgy is for each and every one of us when we come with faith and the fear of God and we listen to the words of the priest and the bishop as they pray the liturgy for the living and the dead and the miracles that take place through the liturgy. This is something for us to ponder today. 